Amen. Can't stop praising his name. Let us uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have once again blessed us with this opportunity that we could assemble ourselves together here as one with all of our minds focused on thee, seeking a word from above. And Father, from the earnest and sincere desire of our hearts, we just ask that you would let your word go forth and it would accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. And we will be ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory that is due unto thee. And we ask it all in the name of Christ and for his sake, amen. amen. Can't stop praising his name. We have and we are having a good time in the Lord this week, aren't we? Everyone been enjoying the classes? I've been enjoying the classes and the participation and I uh, I want to uh, thank the pastor for this opportunity and uh, the committee uh, for asking Brother Harden and myself uh, to share the word of God with all of us, including myself. And I want to thank uh, Brother Harden uh, for his spirit. Thank him for uh, his prayers and his kind words. Yeah, yeah. And I want to thank all of you for assembling yourselves together this evening. Our topic is just say yes. And while the focus is on just saying yes, without our speaking it, just in the process of saying yes, we've already said no to a whole lot of things. So, while the focus is also on the yes, let's be mindful of the things we've said no to. Sometimes the no's get in the way of the yes. So, I won't be long, let us look at our scripture. It's gonna be out of the 13th chapter of Matthew Beginning at the 36th verse. Matthew, the 13th chapter, and the 36th verse. Then 
Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned into fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You may be seated. This uh, explanation at the request of his disciples um, carries over from Matthew, the 13th chapter, and verses uh, 24 through 30, and I'm certain that we are quite familiar with the story of the sower who sowed seeds in the field to bring about the crop or the harvest of wheat. And while he had sowed the seeds, someone came in and sowed in some tares among the wheat. And once it was detected, it signaled an alarm. And as soon as they recognized that there were tares among the wheat, their first reaction was to snatch them up and take them out because of the harm that the tares possessed. But the one who sowed the seeds also understood the character of the tares. And because the preservation of the wheat outweighed the urgency of removing the tares, he said, no, don't don't take them up yet, lest we pull up some of the wheat while we are trying to remove the tares. He said, no, let them go ahead and grow and mature until the time of harvest comes. And then we will separate the wheat from the tares. And we will take the tares and bind them up and burn them. But the wheat we will take into the barn. The wheat has some usefulness, but the tares are useless. Now what I want us to focus on just briefly is that the wheat was fine until the tares appeared. There was nothing wrong with the wheat. The wheat didn't have any problems. 
The wheat wasn't contaminated. The wheat wasn't spoiled. The wheat didn't have any mistakes in it. The wheat had fulfilled the purpose that was expected when the seed was planted. The wheat didn't have any problems until the tares came in. We don't have any problems until the tares come in. The world, the scripture said, is the field. That's us. The seed is the information that is stored here in our minds and then through the thought process is acted out. Now let's look at the seed. The sower who planted the seed recognize that the seed had and that the seed has potential. But the sower of the seed also recognized that once the seed was planted, he would not see the seed again in that same form. The sower of the seed recognized that the seed was going to change, that the seed was going to die, yeah. that the seed was going to be transformed, that it was not going to be eliminated, it was going to be extended, that it was going to live in another form, that it was going to provide another service. The sower of the seed had expectations because it knew the value of the seed. There are expectations of us. And some of us reach a certain level in the growing process and we feel that we have matured. But we haven't gone through the continuation of the process, which transforms us from who we are to whom God wants us to be. And so when we look at this whole ordeal of the tire and the wheat. Let's look at why it caused such an alarm. There, during the time of Christ here, Rome was ruling. And Rome had decreed a law that anyone who was growing crops, if they sowed any tares in among the crop, it was a crime punishable by death. They didn't kill anyone physically, but they rendered the crop outside of its potential use. And because it could have destroyed the whole crop which was needed to feed the masses, Therefore, it was considered a crime, and anyone caught doing it would be punished even by death. Isn't it something, wouldn't it be something if those today that are sowing tires because of the potential that it has of how that it can destroy 
or it can render a whole mass of people, it can take away from them the potential that they have because we've sowed in some bad seeds. And one of the things that we recognize about the tire is, is that the tire was in the same soil as the wheat was. Sometimes we think <laughs> that certain things won't affect us. <laughs> Although we're in the same atmosphere, we're in the same, we're in the same society, we're in the same company, and we are visually seeing the effects of what the tares, the bad seed, are doing to others, but we think that it won't have an effect on us. But they are sown into the same soil into the same space, into the same existence that the wheat is occupying. Now look at again some of the characteristics of the, of the tar. The tar, the roots of the tar, they refer to them as the tendrils. But the roots of the tar, they don't into the soil in a vertical form. They don't go straight down into the soil. They have a spiraling trunk or root to them. And although when we see wheat or we see farms and we notice that the farmers place them in very organized and asymmetrical order, Everything looks like it is decent and it is formed properly. It's pleasing to the eye. But underneath, <laughs> underneath, <laughs> the root of the tire, it doesn't have any order. It spirals and it crosses the aisle and it entangles itself around the root of the wheat. And this is why the sower said, don't pull the tear out because it may harm the wheat because it's crooked in its nature. And it entwines itself around that that has a purpose. And sometimes we think that we can dip and dab into things of the tire, and they will not decrease the purpose of the wheat. But the science says that the tire steals the nutrients in the soil from the wheat, and it retards the growth. It doesn't eliminate it, but it retards it. It slows the process down. It steals nutrients that are for the wheat. But because the tear is present, it steals what was intended for the wheat. It not only crosses the aisle and spirals down, it doesn't spiral up. But the wheat comes up. That's it. Right. But the tire yeah. still from up.
Yeah. But they're trying to record it. Can you hear me? But the tires tower above the wheat, and they cast a shadow on the wheat, and they block the sunlight that was coming to continue the maturing process for the wheat. But because the tares sprouted up and blocked the light, they cast a shadow over the light that God made for the wheat, for his crops. Sometimes in our life, we have tires around us. <laughs> and the tires sprout up. Yeah. All right. And unfortunately, All right. Bring it home. they get more attention than the wheat. Because the wheat is doing what it's supposed to do. The wheat is obedient. The wheat is providing nutrients for those that partake of it. Mm -hmm. But the tire doesn't provide nutrients, it just steals them. Just like certain experiences that we've had where, you know, sometimes we can make it simple and just have two. We have two individuals, two children, two adults. This is for all of us. In fact, the scripture said that the good seed was the children of the kingdom because God don't have no adults. No matter how old we are, we still God's children. I don't think none of God's children really want to be God's adults. <laughs> we are all children of the Most High. But sometimes we have children, one of them is real good. <laughs> but another one is mischievous. <laughs> the one that's real good, we compliment them. We acknowledge their achievements. But the one that's real bad, it requires more time, more attention. Right. We got to go above and beyond because they are not in order. So I have to do more. <laughs> I got to overextend myself because although I said the same thing to both of them, one of them listened, but the other one didn't. The other one was there. The other one had ears, but the other one didn't hear what I said. <laughs> yep, that's it. So such it as it is in our society, what this does is, again, it drains the nutrients that are for the wheat. Look at our society. Look at how much money we are spending on the problems of the society 
which drain funds in other areas that would be allocated for the good in the society. But because the evil has become so prevalent, we got to steal money from the good funds to accommodate the bad. It puts a drain on us even as individuals in our own homes, in our own families. The good children don't cost, the bad ones cost. And then the bad ones are just like the tares. They are proud and arrogant and unruly. You can't tell them nothing, but they won't help. But you was in the same soil that the wheat was in. The help was already there. And the same soil is still available now. Yeah, yeah. See it. Where do you want to be planted? You can continue to be like the tire, but the funds will run out. This is why at the first sight of the tires, they said, let's pull them out, get them out of here. All they going to do is coast our crop later. And we have plenty in society right now who think and say and pass laws that say we are tired of mixing the tire with the wheat. If they don't have it now, we are not going to tax the society anymore trying to compensate for the behavior of the tariffs. We have laws in place and we will execute them. Just like the scripture said, gather the tire up, bind it, put it in the furnace and burn it because it has no usefulness. It's unfortunate. It breaks our heart, but so does the arrogance, the disrespect, the disorder. That breaks our heart also. When does the terror cry about that? So. I'm almost done. I wanted us just to recognize the dangers of the tire. As I said, the crop, the crop was fine. Somebody sold in these things that destroyed it. In Genesis 1 and 31, God looked at everything that he made. Everything that he made. And he said to himself, this is not just good. He looked at everything that he made and he said, it is very good. Everything. He didn't look at it and say, I did everything right. I just made one mistake. He looked at everything that he did. And he said, it is very good. And so the question for us is, who sold the tires? Scripture tells us that God is love. <laughs> who sold the hate? 
Scripture told us that God is no respect of person. Who sold in classism, racism, individualism? God is the God of all people. Who sold in separatism? God is the God of just. Who sold in injustice? God is the God of intelligence. Who sold in ignorance? Who sold these things in? And then the wheat began to think <laughs> that the tire was right. And the wheat, you know, when you look at the wheat, everything that Christ says has a purpose. When you look at the wheat, it has properties to it. Wheat has minerals and nutrients in it. It has a fiber that is good for the di di uh, digestive tract. You know how that works? Is that it removes out of our digestive system things that should not be there. <laughs> isn't, isn't God something he said, I'm going to use this wheat based upon what purposes I put in it. He said, I'm going to draw their attention to what the wheat does. It removes things from you that should not be in you. <laughs> I, I had a colonoscopy a few years ago. I think I'm due another one. And one of the first things that the doctor told me after the results of the test was, he said, Leonard, you need more fiber in your diet. He said, the fiber will clean your colon out. <laughs> Isn't that something? Look wheat up. First thing you'll see is, is that it has fiber. It will clean us up. <laughs> Another thing that it has it has certain nutrients in it that are good for your nerves. They're good for your skin. <laughs> they have all types of health potential in the wheat. It's not in the tire. Sometimes the tire has the ability of trying to make us think that we are missing out on something by just being the wheat. <laughs> Look up tire, and you'll find out it's considered as a poison. <laughs> it's good at killing and destroying, but it has no potential for life. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope something was said that God would be pleased with, and um, I, <laughs> uh, Brother Harden said something the other night about where he was in, in his uh, maturity, in his walk, and I want to share something with you all, but I kept asking the Lord for something uh, to say. Give me a message, give me a word. And so the Lord gave me a word for tonight, but he still hadn't given me one for tomorrow. And I read a couple of passages and I like, I could do this, I could do that. But I was like, but that was uh, Leonard, and he, that was Leonard saying I could do this and I could do that. And I was like, Lord hadn't said yet. So I'm going to ask you all, because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So I'm going to ask you all, ask the Lord, give Leonard a message for us for tomorrow night. <laughs>